In this session, let's discuss about authentication methods provided by Vault. If we already have authentication via AWS Azure, so we can make use of that or cloud native ways or traditional ways like LDAP, AD, Kerberos, like this or Vault native. So, Vault native has a token method, user pass method, or approval method. So, in this session, we will explore more of Vault native methods. I mean more about token user pass and approval methods talking about types of auth methods so we do the uh, division based on these two categories based on how user is using the author auth methods or how application is using the auth method so as long as a user is dealing so we can make use of user pass LDAP or token or if application is dealing with the authentication then obviously uh, approval is something a suggested way so here uh, I have set up this uh, variables vault address and vault token and I have initialized vault in dev method following this way and uh, I did the unsealing and all so you can see vault status is sealed is false the token set as root so if I do login you can see secret is there it is all empty okay nothing but created in the last session we have discussed about kv okay how version 2 version 1 is there and we played with the creating kv and dealing it so let's talk about authentication these are the few uh, cli commands which you can perform so if you want to see what all auth list right now available so i can just do this auth list so it treated me only token has been enabled user pass and approval is still disabled i can this is how i can enable it this is how i can tune it and disable it like this so these are the few key takeaways you can just go through the slides user pass authentication method so now we already executed this let's see if we want to do the listing in the detailed way so you go here and detail so it showed you with default it doesn't show you you know this seal replication it's not required but if you want to see it just append this you will see the detail now let's enable the user pass okay so now you can see user pass has been initialized now let's create one user okay with admin as a user password is password 2022 exclamation and policies is admin so in in vault you know you can see we haven't created any policies be, right now with the name admin but still it allows us to you know make use of it so vault thinks that it vault doesn't believe on creating a policy first you know you can assign it and just create it later so let me create one user admin user so now you can see our admin user has been created so if i go to this access token you can see this user pass and admin obviously i can see the password because this is how this is why the auth methods are there password is sensitive and cannot be shown now let's do the login okay so user is admin and password is now if i do vault token lookup you can see policies attached is root okay but what if i log in with these credentials now let's log in with this now you see the difference now as we have logged in with the admin user so you can see the policies assigned me is admin so in the next session i'll be discussing more about you know uh, policies we will see in details so now let me disable it yeah now you can see if you go to auth methods it's nothing got deleted now this was just to show you how to enable disable it now not just like you know you can see here the user pass was the path got used by default but what doesn't re restrict us there we can enable we, we can enable this user path in our custom path as well so let's use this enable the user pass with this on this path okay 
okay now user user pass has been created now let me create this user captain password is america policies is xyz now, now let me log in again now you can see the login has been successful and the policies assigned is xyz so now i can let up define this policy let me disable it disable it so if i switch back it you can see mcu has been created and nothing has found so so now as we have seen uh, is user pass authentication methods let's switch on to this approval because approval is a very big topic okay so you can see here in my to do list if you go here so in this session i'll discuss more about approval what its importance and three real life use cases i mean first is policy controlled second is rule controlled and third is how we can do it in an automated way main thing is how to protect it because a secret id is just like a password how to protect it so we will see this so in this session i'm just giving you the recap okay how to enable the auth method approval this is how uh, approval authentication is done we first enable it and then we create a role with a policy and by that role we can then fetch a role id and secret id and then log in with that role id and retrieve a specific password associated so let's see it how it can be achieved so again let me enable this auth method approval has been initialized now let me create a role called jenkins okay this is just a random name i can pick it pick it up any name and here i'm just doing this uh, assigning the period for 1 hour role has been created now let's fetch the role id now role id has been fetched now let's fetch the secret id so secret id is password i have a, have a closer look so if i do if i fetch role id any number of time it remains constant okay but instead if i fetch secret id okay so you can see right now it is 2729 if i do it again it keeps changing okay so this is how the password rotation is there now now in the further session or in the next session when i'll be explaining more about uh, this app rule so here i'll show you you know how can we restrict this approval you with the help of secret id and token so we can use this the secret id the maximum number of use of secret id should be only 3 so as you can see it has not enabled so i can retrieve it as many as number of times but in the later session i will show you how to make use of 3 how to make use of this ttl again not only on secret id i can give you the token as well you know how can we restrict use of token ttl associated but let's stick to a basic you know how approval with this session okay so now we have role id and we have secret secret id so this is my secret id and uh, this is my role id so i'm just copying it now if i do you can see here approval and login so let me just log in so done <clears throat> now i can make use of this token okay let's use this token now vault token lookup this will give me what all things associated with this token you can see my this will give me you know that uh, i have logged in via this role jenkins and logged in via app role policy assigned is default maximum period was 1 hour you remember we we set it 1 hour here right now the countdown has been started so you can see maximum ttl is 1 hour if i do it again so it is now 50 so so this this token will last only for a 1 hour after which it will expire and uh, again to disable it what token disable just replace enable with disable ah 
remember i had logged in here as role uh, as this role jenkins that's why so if i switch it back to if i switch it back to root that's why it gave, gave me permission denied but if i switch it back to root and do the so it, so it is successful so now we have seen uh, auth method for approval now let's have let's have a look on the third auth method which is token so few things that for root token root token can do anything it never expires it, it can we can make use of this root token with three ways and revoke as soon as possible working with tokens again token create token lookup token if you want to see what capabilities are there so we can see this token capabilities lifetime so these are the key takeaways you can read it token ttl associated and all those so token create i can do this token create okay i can make user considering the current user whatever the token we have created automatically that roles and privileges gets passed on to that token so instead of you know uh, creating a token just like this always use this like for ttl use limit like two and policy associated so we can make a control over that token so right now i am creating a token with these three things so now you can see it is no more a root so it is has a default policies and jenkins just like policy we can create a token based on the role so just to show you i am creating a role any random role and then role can have policy mapped so policy 1 policy 2 or you know single policy period for one hour i am creating a role here rule has been created and now i am creating a token with the use of that role so it was like a token only with policies but now here token with role and a policies done now i can you can see these are the policies mapped and this is my token and uh, yeah which set it you can see here these are my policies my countdown has been started detail is of 8 hours number of users i didn't restrict it so this is way and then you can revoke your token like this way ah sorry i need to be i need to be a root done now as the token has been revoked now if i do can see now the token has been revoked so i can make use of this token again it has been completely revoked so yeah these are the things associated with the token now in the next session guys please stay with me i will be focusing on rules and policies i will explain this rules and policies with the help of this scenario i'll create three users with the user pass we'll attach a policy associated and we'll explain about you know how can we make a policy controlled user and this is the kv engine we will create three different kv secrets and we'll try to fetch it so if so this is possible and if developer wants to do or access some other secret so it should get permission denied so we will discuss this scenario and in the next session which is a most important session where i'll explaining the app role in details its importance and Uh, real life scenarios that's it for this session stay with me thanks thanks for watching my video please like comment and subscribe this will help me to work on myself